Long story short, same thing happens with electrons. Now electrons, we think of them as proper particles, right? And nevertheless, we get an interference pattern with, with electrons. It's the same two slit interference pattern happens with electrons. That is crazy, folks. That's nuts. So while shooting electrons through two slits, we do not get just two globs of electrons, two bands of electrons, if we don't shoot them well, but many bands. And this happens even if we shoot one electron at a time. Shoot one electron at a time, you get a localized impact, but the accumulation of those impacts will have many bands. Okay, so this happens um, when we shoot one electron at a time, what we observe is that the impacts are localized and random, but these localized events build up multiple fringe interference pattern, familiar two slit interference pattern. However, what exactly does the wave aspect correspond to in the case of electrons? Like what's waving here? Okay, with photons, I could convince you that it's the electric field. I, came up with this weird reinterpretation of the meaning of the solution of the Maxwell's equation is that it gives us the probability. And we could somehow reconcile the wave particle duality uh, uh, or, or in the context of the two slit uh, interference or one slit diffraction. With electrons, you still get the same kind of behavior Right, but then it's you get multiple fringes and so on. And with the one slit, you get a single slit diffraction pattern, you know, the one with satellite wings. Okay, and so okay, in the in the case of photons, we have the electric field to fall back on in order to. I give probability, fine. Probability, randomness, crazy, but fine. But what's waving here? Like what's waving? What's the wave aspect? Okay, electrons, photons have particle aspect. Okay, fine. But electrons have a wave aspect. What's waving? So now we're gonna extend, I'm gonna extend what I said here. I'm gonna extend the interpretation. Okay, the standard quantum mechanical interpretation is then extended to electrons as follows. Okay, so at this point, you can take that as a postulate. So first of all, and I'm gonna try to use the same word. So if you compare this with this, you will see that they're almost the same words. Okay, so the particle and wave aspects of uh, electrons, are inseparable. Particles behave, or let me say not particles, electrons behave simultaneously like a wave, and I will explain to you what, what exactly is waving, and a flux of particles 
the wave, which I still have to tell you what it is, the wave enables us to calculate the probability of the manifestation of the particle. Okay, so the, when we do make the measurement and particle expresses itself in a localized manner, yet there is randomness. So this wave aspect is a tool from which we can, using which we can calculate the probability of the manifestation of that particle-like aspect, the localized impact. And again, I'm gonna unpack this, so predictions about the behavior of a particle can only be probabilistic. Maybe I, a better way to phrase it is that the outcome of an experiment can only be predicted in a probabilistic or in a statistic manner. Okay, so now what's waiting? So the information about a particle at time t is given, given by this thing called the wave function. Psi, and it's again a function of position and time. So now it's this wave function is what characterizes the state of a particle at time t. Not the position of the particle, but the wave function. And we can use the wave function to give probabilistic prediction of where the particle is, or how fast the particle is going. This, so this is a Greek letter Psi. Wave function I must say this wave function will in general be complex. If you evaluate the wave function at a given point in space, x, y, z, at a given time, it will not give you a number, it will give you a complex number. Okay, so we'll have to do a little primer on complex numbers. But a complex number has an amplitude and a phase. So the probability of observing a, a particle at time t and location x, y, Z is proportional to the amplitude of the wave function at that position and that time quantity squared. 
the square of its amplitude. Sometimes they also call the psi itself the probability amplitude. That's a little bit older language. They call psi not wave function, but the probability amplitude because its amplitude squared gives the probability. But we'll just call it the wave function. That's a modern language. And you might say, well, okay, this is, you're just pulling wool over my eyes. You're just calling it the wave function. You didn't tell me how to compute the wave function. And the, the theory or the mathematics that tells us how to compute this wave function exists, and it's given by a certain equation called the Schrodinger's equation. 